It's the Mustang Insider Show presented by Cal Portland, the largest building materials company of cement and construction material products on the West Coast. Now, here's Chris Sylvester, the voice of the Mustangs. All right, off we go with another edition of the Mustang Insider presented by Cal Portland. And when you think about Cal Poly athletics right now and, and teams that are playing well, you have to talk about the Cal Poly Stangs on the baseball field. Since they dropped three of four to Nevada in the first weekend of the season, they have roared back in a big way. They've won seven of their last nine games, including a series victory this past weekend at home over the sixth ranked team in the country. Brooks Lee, the reigning Big West Player of the Week, already the second time he's garnered that honor less than a month into the season. He's our guest here on the Mustang Insider. Brooks, really appreciate you taking some time out of your busy schedule uh, to join us. Uh, just mention that. You guys have won seven of your last nine games since uh, losing the opening series of the season. Your thoughts on, on how well you guys have been playing? Uh, we've had some timely hitting for sure, and uh, our bullpen's been really good. Uh, we started off a little bit slow, but um, figured out what we needed to work on. And a lot of the players are a little more confident and comfortable. And uh, ultimately, that carried us into the seven of nine victories. Yeah, seven of nine, two out of three over a really good UCLA team at home this past weekend. You guys uh, were so close to sweeping that series. Yeah. Uh, got within a run in that slugfest uh, on a chilly Saturday night. Uh, that being said, a, a big series victory for you guys as you get headed into the Big West now, and the schedule is going to look a little bit different this year. There's going to be 40 conference games. It's going to be four game weekend series with a doubleheader on the middle day of the weekend. We'll dive into all that, but what's the vibe? What's the mood like around practice in the clubhouse right now with you guys seemingly clicking on all cylinders? Um, I'd say it's a lot different than it was in the past couple of years. Uh, we're a little more uh, relaxed and just having a lot more fun, uh, but we're also still playing. Uh, very good uh, in practice and it shows in the games but uh, yeah everybody's um, they finally figured out what we're uh, all about and um, we all believe in ourselves so that helps us um, on the field. Brooks Lee star shortstop of the Cal Poly Mustangs uh, with us this week on the Mustang Insider presented by Cal Portland just looking at some of these numbers here man 440 six doubles one triple four homers 18 runs driven in you only had two at-bats last season before the shutdown and uh, it, it wasn't an easy journey for you to get back to the playing field. Obviously, I think the big question mark around these parts was, is Brooks going to stay and play for his dad at Cal Poly, or is he going to go from high school to the professional level? At what point did you make the decision that, you know what, I I'm going to spend a few years at Cal Poly, play for my dad, and, and play under the lights at Baggett? Uh, it was actually the day before the draft, so... The draft was on a Monday, and I figured uh, I figured it out on a Sunday, uh, Sunday night, and then called my advisor on Monday morning before the draft. Uh, it was a very emotional decision, uh, but uh, I definitely think I chose um, the right path, and I haven't looked back since then. Well, you haven't looked back since then, and, and you're having fun out there with the guys. Uh, you mentioned making that decision the night before the draft. Uh, you grew up watching your dad – coached some really good teams at Cal Poly, Big West champion teams, number one team in the country at one point back in 2014. Uh, it must feel kind of surreal to, to be suited up in the Cal Poly green and gold and, and all those other great uniform combinations you guys have. What, what was it like when, when you got your first at bat? I, I, know, I know it was a strikeout last year yeah. against Baylor, but yeah. what was it like finally stepping into the batter's box at Baggett against another school when it all really counted? Uh, it was very emotional. Um, coming up to the box, I had tears in my eyes. Um, I was just really excited uh, and super thankful for the opportunity. And uh, I mean, I was really, uh, I was really excited just to be back on the field once again. Um, it was emotional because of coming back from my injury so quickly and then uh, coming back and trying to help our team win a game. And it just, uh, it's just been a great experience for me. And, that was one of the most um, most memorable experiences in my baseball career. Yeah, we were so excited to, to get your bat back in the lineup last year. And then, of course, everything came, came crashing down, unfortunately, with, with the start of the pandemic. And I'm so happy we're able to hopefully have a full season here uh, this spring. Your dad wasn't even coaching that game. He, he 
Uh, there was an incident, you know, earlier in the week where, uh, you know, a few pitches got away from our guys at Santa Clara. And uh, un unfortunately, he wasn't allowed to coach that game. So uh, did you ever get this the scoop? Like, was he peeking out of the clubhouse? Was he yeah. watching or, or like where did where did he see that at bat? Uh, he was there uh, intentionally. But, uh, yeah, he was out in the uh, right field corner um, in his office because we had one of those temporary uh, – deals for offices um because of the new clubhouse and uh yeah he was just um had the door open and taking a peek um and it was pretty i mean i i saw him on the way up there when i was walking up to the plate but uh yeah we had coach worker coaching third uh and he was our head coach for that game it was it was a pretty different atmosphere but uh yeah he was, i mean he was uh he was emotional too when i got up to the plate yeah, that was a fun game. Uh, Marin Khan said the big game tying double in the ninth, and then Cole Cabrera with the big walk off hit to beat the Baylor Bears. That was last year. Uh, I want to talk a lot about this year, but how about the rehab process back from that hamstring injury that you suffered in the fall of, uh, I guess it was 2019 going into 2020? It caused you to miss almost the first month of the season. Uh, what, what was that like? A seemingly a pretty serious injury uh, for you to come back on. I know you, you, you still weren't 100 percent in those two at bats that you had last year. But uh, what's the process been like coming back from an injury like that? And and do you still have any lasting effects of it now? Uh, no, I'm 100 percent healed now. Uh, I stay on top of it pretty well. But uh, it was definitely a it was not a fun process. Uh, it was uh, supposed to be a six to eight month uh, procedure, but uh, with the help of slow sports therapy, I came back in four and a half months and uh, I definitely wasn't ready by then, but I could swing a bat. Uh, but yeah, I mean, it's just a lot of hamstring stuff and uh, a lot of stability for my knee. Uh, but I mean, it was, it was something that I tried to turn into a positive, uh, definitely because I felt like I would be better once I came back from it uh, in a lot of different aspects of my game. So uh, I just try to look at it as a positive outlook. But, uh, yeah, it was not a fun process. Uh, a lot of pain, but, yeah. Well, it, it, we're so happy that you're back at 100%. We're, we're seeing the effects of it. Mentioned the numbers that you put up here through the first month or so of the season. I'd imagine you had to master patience over the last year and a half. Like, I can't imagine how difficult it must have been to get word that the season was canceled uh, just a few days after your first couple of at-bats in the Cal Poly uniform and, and having to wait almost a year uh, to the beginning of this season. I mean, what, what was, take, take me through that timeline of the, the decision to play for your dad at Cal Poly, the injury that kept you out the first month of last season, the shutdown, the, the miserable quarantine period that we all had to go through, and then finally against Nevada last month, playing some meaningful baseball games and getting this thing going again? Uh, so, yeah, after the decision, um, basically, I just had a couple more weeks of school in high school. Uh, and then I went to Corvallis uh, to play for the Knights for summer ball. And that was a great experience. And then once I came back from there, I just had a little bit of time to relax. And then we started up for my freshman year. And I think I had surgery on uh, Halloween, so October 31st, not cool, but um, I had surgery and then uh, I just spent Christmas break uh, just rehabbing and then came back in, I'd probably say early March. Um, and then once everything got shut down, uh, I was just here uh, lifting and we have our own weight room here at the field. So I did everything here. Um, and then really it was just like getting phone calls after phone calls of leagues, summer leagues getting, uh, shut down. So I was fortunate, fortunate enough to get a spot, uh, in Wilmer, Minnesota, uh, in the Northwoods. Um, and I'm very grateful for that because not a lot of uh, teams are playing. Uh, and then I had my whole summer deal there and then came back and luckily I had a, a, a nice fall, uh, a nice healthy fall. And then just, yeah, we got ready for the season real quick. Uh, obviously, we we're unsure if we we're going to have season at all. Uh, but luckily, it's a full 56 game schedule. Uh, and here we are. So, Yeah, here we are. And you guys, as we mentioned, you've won seven of nine. That includes a couple of series victories against teams down south that, that just about everybody in the SoCal area likes to root for USC 
and UCLA. Uh, let's let's talk about this past weekend series against the Bruins. It seems like you maybe knew some of those guys from uh, you know travel ball and and whatever else throughout the years. A lot of talent on that side for sure, but. I think you guys showed that you can hang with anybody out West in college baseball. Uh, what was that feeling like when, when Brian Wu was able to get that final out Sunday and you guys were finally able to exhale and, and enjoy that series victory against the top 10 team? Uh, it was great. Um, it's just something that I feel like we're able to accomplish uh, and that we should be able to accomplish. Um, it's nothing out of the ordinary for us, I think. Uh, I've been part of a couple winning teams and this is one of the best ones that I've been around for sure. Uh, so at the end of the day, I just feel like that's what we're, uh, we're supposed to do. Um, and it's not, a, uh, it's not a feeling that should be unordinary for us. Brooks Lee is our guest here on the Mustang Insider presented by Cal Portland. Now you guys head into the Big West. What are your thoughts on the way the schedule is this time around. You're going to play four games against everybody, hopefully, and that's going to include a doubleheader in the middle game of the series. Usually that'll be Saturday, but it's a little bit different with finals this week. You guys are playing a Saturday to Monday series on the road against CSUN. And what's interesting with, with a program like CSUN, and when you look at Long Beach State as well, they opted not to play any pre-Big West games. So what are you guys expecting out of this Northridge team that is, is going to be playing their first game against you guys? And you're, you're getting up there in, in the high teens as far as games played already this season. Um, well, we haven't been able to scout them at all. Uh, just so some of our guys have played with each other, uh, but we're just going based off of that. Uh, but we're not, we're not going to underestimate them at all just because it's their first series. Uh, every team in the big West is uh, able to be anybody. So I think, um, Really, I mean, it just comes down to showing up ready for the game and no matter who your opponent is that weekend, uh, treating everybody the same. It's not just you. There's been other guys in the lineup that have had really hot starts to the season at the plate. I think about Miles Emerson and how he just continues to get better year after year as a hitter. He's actually been hitting in front of you uh, in the batting order this season. And then another guy that you brought in from Washington state. And I don't know if Cal Poly fans were necessarily expecting this, but Matt Lopez is hitting close to 500 this season. And it's not like a fluky 500 where he's only played in half the games. I mean, this guy has become an everyday starter for you here over the past few weeks. And he's still tearing the cover off the baseball. Uh, it seems like this lineup is, is probably one of the, the better ones that, that your father has had since that 2014 big West championship team. Yeah, for sure. Uh, it's just a lot of it is about the timely hitting and picking each other up when uh, someone else fails. So, I mean, really, uh, it's just every guy has each other's back in the lineup and uh, every every at bat is stressful for the other team. And we're a stressful lineup for sure. A uh, stressful lineup and going into conference play that's going to be important. What are some goals that you guys ha have set for yourselves as a team? Like, is there a is there a, a mantra that, that you guys have, like a like a saying as far as this season goes, or um, are you just going out there and taking care of business every day? Yeah, well, I mean, we uh, definitely want to win the Big West. Um, that's something that we know we can grasp onto. But uh, it's just why not us, honestly? Um, we're the team that's able to do it. And I think uh, we have a really good chance of winning the uh, Big West, so that gives us a spot for the um, the tournament and then, Anything can happen once you make it to Omaha, I and mean, that's what we believe we can do. So, I know this is only the second season where you've actually been on the team, but you've been so close to the program since uh, your dad got the job in the early 2000s. Uh, you're aware of, of the non-conference struggles that, that these teams have had the past few years, and then they heat up in conference, finish second, but RPI-wise, it's not enough to get into a regional so now that you guys have found a way to get out of the pre-Big West schedule over 500 with some quality wins RPI-wise, maybe something that looks good on a resume uh, come the end of the season to the committee, um, how much more uh, motivated and confident is, is this group going into conference uh, kind of knowing that, you know, you guys have taken care of business already in a lot of ways and maybe there's a little less pressure come, come conference play? Yeah, I mean, we just got to keep it going. Uh... It's especially good that we have big teams on our schedule during the preseason. Um, that's what Coach Lee likes to do for every season. Um, so, I mean, 
luckily we did play very well um, in the start. And so that's what should really carry us on. Uh, in the past couple of seasons, it's been a little different. We play those big teams and didn't have as much success. But I think uh, just because we have beaten those teams like UCLA, USC, uh, it should really show uh, show who's boss in the Big West. And, uh, yeah, we're just going to carry it on forward for each and every game. Yeah, I'm, I'm from L.A. It's always sweet when Cal Poly can knock off those two programs, SC, UCLA. It doesn't matter the sport. doesn't matter the occasion. Got to show them that, that you know, th there's not that big of a gap between those programs and, and what's here at Cal Poly. Looks like you're joining us from, from the clubhouse. What's that been like since it's been built? Oh, my God. It's a uh, dream come true. It's great. Uh, spent a lot of time here. Spent not as much time as I would uh, because of COVID, but uh, it's just uh, unbelievable. Um, showers, lockers, and we have space for studying during study hall. And uh, it's right next to our batting cage and uh, easy access from the parking lot. It's just unbelievable, and we're super grateful for it as a team. You got a, a pretty young pitching staff that goes on the weekends for you, Drew Thorpe. Uh, he, he's uh, technically a redshirt freshman, only only pitched about a month last season. You bring in Weston from Boise State. He's had some nice outings, uh, had the complete game against Utah Valley a couple of weekends ago. And, and we've seen Andrew Alvarez kind of get comfortable in that Sunday starter slot. Uh, what, what are your thoughts on, on the group that you have with, with this pitching staff? And how important are these guys going to be when you get into the, the four game weekend series, starting with Northridge this upcoming weekend? Uh, it's, uh, it's everything. Um, our starters have done a really good job in the past. Uh, and there's a lot of faith from our infield, uh, playing behind them. Um, the bullpen is extremely, um, important for us just because we're going to need it for this four game series. Uh, but I mean, they're doing great. And when they don't do great, then we can count on our hitters and our defense to pick them up a little bit. All right, Brooks, really appreciate you joining us here today. I got one final thing for you. Let's say you're in a scenario in a super regional tie ball game, bottom of the ninth inning. Do you want a lefty or a righty up there? I know you're a switch hitter. You look really comfortable both sides, but do you have a preference in a situation where you're, you're trying to come up with a big hit in a late game situation? Um, honestly, there's no preference for me anymore. Uh, if this was a year ago, I would say left-handed. Uh, but my right-handed swings come a long way. So uh, either way, I'm confident in the ability. All right, there he is already, the two-time Big West Player of the Week, perhaps Big West Player of the Year, if he can uh, keep it going. Brooks Lee, our guest here on the Mustang Insider. Really appreciate your time. Safe travels down south this week, and we'll see you at CSUN. Right on. Thank you very much. All right, that was Brooks Lee, the outstanding young star shortstop of the Cal Poly Mustangs, hitting 440 this year, six doubles, a triple, four homers, 18 runs driven in. I can't imagine what those numbers are going to look like come the end of the season. As always, we have to thank our partners for keeping us moving and keeping us pumping out this Cal Poly content to you. Open up a Cal Poly Mustang checking account today in American Riviera Bank. We'll donate $150 to support student athletes, plus get an exclusive Cal Poly Mustang debit card and Cal Poly checks. Just visit arb.bank forward slash Mustangs for more information. All right. Thanks so much for watching. We'll be back next week with another edition of the Mustang Insider presented by Cal Portland. This has been the Mustang Insider Show presented by Cal Portland with a commitment to environmental leadership that has made the organization stronger and is the primary choice of contractors. The Mustang Insider Show. The preceding has been a Learfield IMG College presentation of the Cal Poly Sports Network.